what is up boys and girls little bit late to the party on this one i will admit don't kill me i was at the rmrs yeah i was busy had shit to do but we're gonna do the scores on the doors for esl pro league anyway we're back we're in business we're just gonna go through there's so many damn teams turn up at esl pro league that I can't spend ages doing a lot of these, so we're just going to flick through some of the lower teams really quickly, um, give them scores and, and just move on. Like We're not going to dwell on these guys too much. FTW, they can just have a C. Wasn't expecting anything more than them to just get spanked every game, and they basically got spanked every game. Took a map off big, so, you know, that's decent. They can have a C for that. Didn't expect any more or less. Movistar Riders, they can have a D. Um, they've been struggling ever since they lost some pious and brought in martinez obviously their new orpa um but i would have expected them to be a little bit more competitive than they were getting a single map against liquid yeah pretty poor particularly considering eg and internal fire in their group they should be seen as like winnable games so it's going to be a d for movistar on the flip side martinez does look pretty decent so i'm not like thinking movistar riders will disappear and never come back again Maybe they can sort things out with this new AWPA, but at the moment, it's looking, uh, yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have Endpoint. Um, hmm, what do we give Endpoint? They did beat Na'Vi 2-0, so they can have a C. Again, Endpoint are a team I would have expected not to get through. I would have expected them to be bottom of this group, but getting a series win over Na'Vi. Um, so yeah, Endpoint gets some credit for that. I'll give them, I'll give them a C plus actually. C plus, winning a series over Na'Vi, pretty decent. He I think they're going to get a D plus. I think we're at the point now where Heat need to start being more competitive. Um, admittedly, they had only just bought Jackson, and the fact that they at least got a series and a couple of map wins means like, yeah, there's something positive there. But in a group with Complexity and Astralis, you should probably be looking to be a little bit more competitive. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh here, but I just I'm starting to the point now where I need to see more from Heat. They played enough like tier one decent cs for me to think i need to see some sort of proof of concept this team can go anywhere um so d plus i was expecting a little bit more from them mibr i think they're gonna get a d plus for me for the same reasons as heat um at this point now i need to see a little bit more than them just beating the bottom feeders of the group if you want to prove to me that there's any concept that you can be like a decent team break into the top 20 i need to start seeing it because again MIBR are another team where I feel like we've seen enough of them. Okay, admittedly, they did lose Cello recently, and he was basically the hard carry of this team. He was absolutely bodying people, but still, I need more from MIBR. D+, plus, not that impressed. Ents, uh, yeah, Ents are going to get an, a D-, minus, and the only reason it's not an E is because they've just made pretty significant roster swaps, but this... I mean, it, maybe it should just be a D plus, actually, because this looks worse than it was. Like, a lot of these maps were close. Um, yeah, we'll give it a D plus because they've just swapped out two players, one of them being um, their star rifler in Spink. So there's going to be a lot of, like, growing pains, I think, friends. And what we saw from them at the EU RMR was obviously significantly better. So we know that we're... we're obviously doing this ranking with a little bit of like almost confirmation bias in a sense that i know that they're good so i'm gonna look at this with the idea of like yes but they're just about to get good because we've seen them at the rmr so but yeah we'll give them a d plus like it, it still wasn't good enough with the lineup they have ents but a lot of the maps were close on a different day they would have picked up more map wins and with a little bit more time they probably would have picked up some series wins and maybe gone through so yeah d plus friends nip nip what a nip get i mean we know they changed the roster right after this realistically they beat endpoint who were bottom feeders of the group and they beat navi navi were not at their best throughout this pro league season so i think nip have to get a d minus because they actually had a settled roster they had a proof of concept yes they switching res onto the orp role which was obviously a change and it looked like from the fact they were switching res onto the orp role, maybe they already knew by the time Pro League was coming around that Alexi B was going to come in. I would suspect they probably did know. Uh, and that the only reason it took so long was just, I guess, negotiations, maybe with G2 or negotiations on contract. So, yeah, I think it has to be a D minus for Nip because, yeah, it's just not good enough with a settled roster to be kind of performing this poorly. And in a group where, like, 
you know, we saw Vitality go on to win the tournament. Yes, Zyra in amazing form. But before, you would have said Vitality are potentially there for the taking. Fnatic, not the greatest team. Like, I think Fnatic are really good. And I think this roster can go on to be like a top 10 team in the world. I really do. But like, again, at this Pro League, you shouldn't have been terrified of them. Na'Vi in shaky form, you know, spirit beatable endpoint. I mean, this wasn't one of the easier groups, but still, Na'Vi, uh, Nip, sorry, should have done better. D minus, that's what I was giving them. Eternal Fire, well, I mean, I think C, C minus, maybe. They should have felt like they could nick the third spot in this group, um, probably with Cloud9 and Liquid going through in the top spot. Um, would have been my predictions before the event, and then Eternal Fire maybe could nick it. If they'd have won this series opener against Furia, um, then it could have looked very different. So, now nah, I'll give Eternal Fire a C. I think they did what they should do when they come to this kind of thing. They're one of the best teams in Tier 2. Obviously, they've just made some changes, but ignoring that, still one of the best teams in Tier 2 and were at this point. And so when they come to big events like this, they should be looking to compete. And they were. They were competitive. Um, in a different scenario, different set of circumstances, maybe they could have gone through. Who knows? But yeah, not too bad. In fact, I'm going to give Eternal Fire a C+. I'm going to give them a plus. I think they were pretty competitive. Look decent. Spirit? Oh, Spirit should have been looking to compete and go through this group. They kind of lost to all the good teams, I would say, in this group. I'm going to give them a C-. They were at least in the competition for that last spot. Probably would have felt like they could have done a bit better, especially considering that they got 2 owed by all the decent teams in the group. So C- minus for Spirit, not really too much to say on them. Big. Oh, what are Big going to get? Yeah, Big, probably the same thing. C-. minus. They did what you expected them to be competitive for that last spot. Ultimately, the fact that they lost to Outsiders in their opener probably really scuppered them and hamstrung them throughout the group. Bigger are in a f absolute like state at the moment, just with having to take Farvan out like regularly and, and him seeming to miss a lot through injury slash illness. And Sin obviously came into the lineup here. Um, because they got rid of Tizian, brought back Keto, it means Keto can't come up from the academy squad to be their sub. So Sin has to do it. Sin looks like decent, but it's tough to come in when you're a sub, when you're a stand in, when the team is maybe looking to bring Farvan back the second he's available. We'll give him a C. Because, I mean, the thing is, they did obviously actually play here with their full lineup. But I just mean, in general, the circumstances around Big are a bit scuffed at the moment. Um, we'll give them a C. They competed for the final spot like they should. Yeah, they can just have a C. Uh, Astralis. Buh, 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 buh. Oh, Astralis, it's really hard because they beat. Mouse, which is pretty impressive because Mouse topped the group and Mouse are pretty decent at the moment. So fair play, that's a legit result. Losing to Complexity in the opener would have been really disappointing considering Complexity's like recent history. However, we've seen from kind of Blast into Pro League into the RMRs that Complexity have improved a lot. So, but then you can't really lose to Heat and then expect to go through. And so I think when you look at these two games and think, they should at least win one of these. Then they probably get through to a group in third. So I'm going to give them a C minus. Again, settled roster, um, which can't be said of everybody in this group. Obviously, um, Heroic relatively recently brought in Yabby. Ents completely revamped. Heat brought in Jax recently. Complexity brought in... You see what I mean. Like, Astralis should be doing better, I think, under these circumstances. So yeah, C minus for Astralis. Not great. EG... Are actually um from me. They beat Eternal Fire and Movistar 2-0. They were somewhat competitive in some of these other series. I'm actually gonna give them a B minus. Like, because of the expectations I had of Evil Geniuses coming into this, I was not sold on the roster changes they'd made at all. I was like, okay, this looks at best like lateral moves. But they are looking much improved in general. Still. I don't think are going to be a threat in European tournaments. Like maybe they'll make some playoffs, but yeah, actually what I saw over all of them was pretty promising and a big improvement on the previous iteration. So yeah, B minus for sure. Like I expected evil geniuses to suck the bag until they completely blew up that roster and started again. But hey, maybe Neyland's the truth, baby.
Right, now we're moving on to uh, teams that I'll talk a little bit more in depth. Oh my god, I burnt 10 minutes on the shit teams, even going through them at speedy rate. Okay, we'll still try and go through a bit speedy. We'll talk about the top eight a bit more in depth. Fnatic, I like this new Fnatic lineup. I think this group stage proved that they can tangle with good teams. They were taking maps off Na'Vi and Vitality. I mean, Na'Vi a bit wobbly and all over the place in this group, but that's a pretty good result, taking a map off Vitality, making that series competitive. And they actually spanked Nip and pretty comfortably, or well, the Spirit game was a bit closer, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, a little bit closer, but even then, they they pretty comfortably stormed through their group to take the second place and were competitive in this series against Liquid. And Liquid obviously went all the way to the finals and were very, very good in this tournament. So Fnatic, they're actually going to get a B plus from me. I'm really liking how this Fnatic roster is looking. Um I think Roy is still very good. Roy is absolutely bossing in all these aggressive spots. I think Mezzi is looking pretty decent as a caller. Nikodos has actually surprised me with how decently consistent he's been on the AWP. He's not been as up and down, I think, as his time on Copenhagen Flames. I think he looks like he might be a little bit more stable and reliable. Uh, and then Crimson Fascia as like uh, other riflers in this team. Fascia, he spoke to me a bit about it at the RMI. He's had to swap a lot of his roles and basically completely change from like being a very aggressive uh, player on Ecstatic to now being much more passive and fanatic. And the longer that they adjust A, Fasher to those roles and B, just with this new team, I think the better they're going to get. I rate Fnatic. They're getting a B plus from me. I think this was a great tournament performance, especially considering who beat them in the playoffs round one. Yeah. Mwah. Banger. Complexity. Honestly, complexity, I think th they're going to get a B plus from me as well. Like, th this is competitive. They spanked Overpass and Inferno could have gone either way, man. Like, Grim is banging ever since the change happened. Fang and Floppy, well, Floppy less so. Flo oh, sorry, Floppy, love you, but didn't want to see you in full HD. Floppy is the guy who I've been, like, kind of most disappointed with the changes on complexity. Not because I think he's shitting the bed and playing super bad or anything, but I was expecting him to pick up more, and I feel like he's the guy who hasn't picked up as much as I was hoping with the changes. But Fang and Grim are playing way, way better. I think JT, yeah, overall his ratings are going to suck in general, but actually he can produce impact frags, and I think particularly on the T side, he can actually be pretty key for complexity in taking space, finding key kills and opening up rounds. So I'm just really happy with this complexity roster. I was really shitting on them with Junior because they did suck. They fucking sucked. They were terrible. But now that they've gotten Junior off the lineup, look, you know, Junior, maybe you'll go on to do shit in future once you've worked on your game a bit, but you were not ready for tier one just as a player full stop. You looked a bit clueless. And from what I've heard behind the scenes, Junior was a bit clueless. So I'm going to give this an A-. minus. Like, uh, it's like... They're in a similar position in some senses to Fnatic. I don't think with as high a ceiling. I don't think complexity can be top 10, but I think they can be a competent and consistent top 20 team. And they're starting, in my estimations, from way further behind. So it's like the B plus of Fnatic gets notched up to an A minus for complexity. And complexity played the best team still in the world, uh, at least by rankings. Yeah, fair play to complexity, A minus. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on the hype train. NA is slightly less dead than it was. It's like the corpse is twitching a bit and like maybe a resurrection is coming. Furia! Uh, C plus. Expectations are to make playoffs. Did so in pretty convincing fashion. Only dropped a series to Cloud9. And then we're kind of comfortably beaten by outsiders who I don't think are a top team by any stretch of the imagination right now. So Furia, they're going to get a C plus from me. Slightly, I would have hoped they could beat Outsiders, but once you balance out the great group stage and at least taking a map... No, I'm going to give them a C, actually. Screw it. Furia, Furia get... Furia! They just get a C. Um, really stagnated as a team. Don't look... I'm not convinced by safe, unfortunately. I don't think safe is good enough as an AWPA, but in general... I just don't think Furio are going to be able to kick on from hovering on the edge of the top 10 with this play style. It's so chaotic. It's so random. They basically sell out their AWPA and drop, um, safe and drop, because 
they don't really play in a coherent way. So it's really hard for an AWP to succeed. And it's really hard for the guy taking the shit rolls to get much done because they play in such a wild and wacky way. Um, K Serato coming back, like he was rated really highly for the group stage. That's positive for them because he'd kind of dropped off towards the end of last season. But yeah, I just don't see where the growth is for this Furia lineup. So, and their performance here was just as they should get to the playoffs. C. And Heroic, uh, the last team that made it into the first round of the playoffs, they got screwed over here. This was panning out to be the best series um, of the tournament, honest to God. It's like one of the best series, at least. Uh, and then there was that awful tech interruption that really fucked the game. It's classic with Heroic. If Hadian, Kadian is top fragging, they're probably not going to beat the best teams in the world. Good group stage. Solid showing here. I'm going to give them a C plus because making the playoffs was the expectation and they got a revitalized simple in the playoffs round one. And that's really rough to play against. Uh, but they, yeah, they did a pretty good job. C plus, pretty competitive. Yeah, go on, heroic. Doing all right. Right, Na'Vi. Oh, it's so hard to say with Na'Vi. You probably give them a C minus. I think top four is the minimum. Not making top four is disappointing. They came up against the G2 that were looking really good in this series. Um, Nico and Mona C were banging. JKS was making up that third role. That You know, the kind of middleman, the guy who's like, needs a bit of impact in frags, but isn't the outright star. You know, if Hunter or JKS can do that on J2 and then Nico and Mona C can bang, it all looks good. However, yeah, it's got to be disappointing for Na'Vi. I think you've got to give them a C- minus or a D+. Plus. I'll give them a C- minus just because G2 were really on fire in this series, particularly, like I say, Nico and Monacy. Um, And if we look at their group stage, that was fucking abysmal. No, D+. Plus. Because their group stage was so abysmal, D+. Plus. Yeah, overall not good enough from Na'Vi. The motivation, I don't think, is there for all of the tournaments these days. These guys, you know, they've won their major. They've won, like, a ridiculous amount of tournaments with this lineup. They know how good they are. And when you get kind of broken out of that rhythm of being dominant, it's happened to FaZe and it's happened to Na'Vi. Once the, the, the rhythm uh, and the streak is kind of broken and the mystique is kind of cracked around you, people no longer look at you like you're invincible... It becomes really hard to like maintain a, a consistent level of excellence. And I think instead you need to look to peak at the right moments, which is what I think Na'Vi and FaZe are finding now. I think the, their best hope, especially for the major, is to make sure they peak at the right moment. So D plus for Na'Vi, not great. Simple's working his way back into form a little bit. I think he started off the season like not great at Blast and such and... Um, in the group stages here, he wasn't like super convincing. Um, and Zywu is kind of, for me, taken that mantle of right this very second, the best player in the world. So we'll see where Na'Vi go. But yeah, for this one, D plus not good enough by their standards to finish fifth to eighth. And they squeaked through the group stages on basically a fucking technicality. They had the same record. It was round difference that saved them. Outsiders. Uh, yeah, Outsiders making it to the quarterfinals. That exceeded my expectations. I expected them to be like battling with Big and if MIBR were good, MIBR, but clearly not. Like, oh, shit. But yeah, Outsiders were, were clearly the third best team in the group. Put uh, Furia to bed. Actually looking like a top 10 team in the world. Pretty solid. Um, and they, they were pretty convincing against Furia. Like these last two maps, like no real troubles on Vertigo and Inferno. Um, James is, has suffered as a result of using, losing, sorry, Yakinda. Fame is starting to grow into a decent player. I wonder if Fame and Flit are a little bit too similar in their styles and maybe the way they like to play that I think in an ideal world, Fame and Flit's roles, whoops, hi Fame, might overlap a little bit, but I think they have to get a, a B plus for this really i think it was a, a good run all things considered and i was not expecting too much from this outsiders lineup i thought it would sit in and around the top 20 but what i've seen of them at their best and in this tournament particularly maybe they can be like a top 10 top 15 team and like squeak you know deep runs here and there maybe anyone i think so i right, mouse what are we saying madrillas uh yeah mouse get a pretty good rank for this one i mean they almost l lose credit like this group i think ended up being like one of the weakest groups like this was the weakest group 
Or was this the weakest group on paper? Oh, it's hard to say, actually. But this group ended up with Ence's kind of like shaky form um, and Astralis' shaky form and Complexity being slightly better. This ended up being like a weaker group than maybe it looked on paper, but Mao still did what they needed to do and kind of, you know, topped it. Disappointing there. I don't know, Mouse for me, they're, they're that team where I think they're just going to hover on the edge of like being good and like very much a deserving top 10. I think they're just going to hover around just outside it. I don't think they have quite enough. Torji had a poor pro league, um, that's for sure. And since the break has been a bit, mm, you know, in general, uh, less consistent and less uh, outstanding than he has been since he joined Mouse in general. Frozen, on the other hand, absolutely balling out of control. That guy's legit. He's the truth. We know this. Ran up against the Liquid, who were on a really hot streak. So unfortunate. Pretty tough quarterfinal draw. Um, they could have definitely had a better quarterfinal draw, all things considered. But I'll give them a B minus. I think they've done enough to deserve more than like a, a C or a C plus. I expected them to make playoffs, probably to get knocked out in the playoffs round one or the quarterfinals, but. Um, I think when they go 4-1 series record and then they do a solid job of keeping a series close against a very hot liquid. No, C, mm, B minus. We'll, we'll B minus them. We'll B minus them. Yes. Phase. Oh, phase, 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 phase. Um, hard to say. Pretty comfortably put to bed in the end. Had a bit of a wobble by losing to G2 in the groups. I think it's got to be similar to Na'Vi and be a D plus. Um, the expectation is bare minimum top four. Weren't super convincing in the groups, but were at least better than this dismal showing. But then they were kind of pretty handily beaten by a Cloud9 who are definitely looking a bit better after the player break than maybe they were before. Although they did win Dallas before. I don't know. Hard to say. But I think FaZe have to get basically the same grade as Na'Vi. Um, Although I would lean a little bit more towards C+, but because I think expectations should be top four, I think they have to slip into a D and instead... Uh, sorry, C-, minus. I was going to... I meant... Um, but yeah, they have to slip into the Ds. Um, slip into, not onto. Get your minds out of the gutter. D-, minus plus. D+, plus. plus for phase. Now, the top four teamsies. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the... Okay, okay, we got a few minutes to talk about the top four teamsies. Um, I'll talk about them, like, kind of holistically. So, Cloud9 came into this, and I think if Cloud9 had played against G2 or Fidelity, they would have won and been in the finals. I think Liquid just were on a hot streak, and OC came alive in this series and really, really helped out with some high-impact rounds. And in general, OC kind of came alive in the playoffs after, like, a pretty doo-doo. I mean, this was more his level for the group stage. OC was the guy for Liquid that I was definitely worried about getting left behind with the changes, but this gives me hope that he can continue to grow as a player, and I'm excited about OC. I think he's really good, and NA have lacked for a decent AWPA for fucking forever, basically. Um, so really nice to see OC performing well. And I think if Cloud9 had played against, like I say, G2 or Vitality, I think Cloud9 would have won. I think it was just unfortunate that they were on the same side of the bracket as Liquid, and Liquid were just on an absolute heater, massive hot streak. So fair play. I think Cloud9 are going to get a B, just a solid B. I would have expected quarterfinals, so I think they exceeded my expectations. And Considering they eliminated FaZe and were so good in the groups, only losing to Liquid, honestly, A, Liquid were on a hot streak, like I say, but the fucking group was over for Cloud9 by then. They'd already qualified, so I'm not knocking them for that result. Uh, yeah, Liquid, I think, get a... Uh, Cloud9, sorry, I think, get a B. Liquid, get an A. Because, yeah, you would have expected around about quarterfinals. I'm pretty... Big uh, on this liquid with Yekindar. I think it's unlocked Elise, and Elise is playing much better in general. Yekindar is balling most of the time. And now that OC has stepped up and can, you know, alongside NAF, provide some impact, suddenly we're cooking with gas and we could have a top five lineup on our hands legitimately. No shame in losing to Vitality in this. Um, you know, that it, it was two to one and overpass was so, so tight. They could have taken it as a three to one score. I think they ran out of steam towards the end of the series. Uh, and when Zaiwu is putting in like 1.4 over the tournament and basically is 1.4 in the grand final across five maps, like 
Zaiwu was just up there doing absolutely superlative things. Um, so, you know, no shame in Liquid. So B for Cloud9, A for Liquid. G2, I think, get a B plus just because doing this well so close to having a, a revamp of the roster where two players went out and two players came in and one of those was an in-game leader. I'm going to give them like a little smidge extra credit than Cloud9, although I kind of similarly am looking at this and thinking good improvement on the previous season. They actually look dangerous, actually look like they could be title contenders. Maybe if G2... Um, I mean, maybe if they just hadn't started so slowly on Mirage, it felt like they just were not really in the game until Inferno happened. Um, but yeah, G2 get themselves the B+, plus, B for Cloud9, A for Liquid. Vitality are going to get an A+. Plus. There's a reason that this isn't an S run for me. They got a pretty friendly quarterfinal draw. I think one, two, three, four, five. Obviously, I know the draw... It, you aren't necessarily going to play these teams because of the way the draw pans out. There's certain teams you can and can't play. But what I'm saying is, in a world where the quarterfinal matchups are like totally randomized, harder opponent, harder opponent, harder opponent, harder opponent, harder opponent, probably at least as difficult as outsiders, if not potentially harder. So I think Vitality got a bit of a kind quarterfinal draw. And even then, outsiders ran them pretty close and fair play. And without Zywu going off, Maybe it's a different game. G2, very comfortable on Mirage. They nick a tight Inferno again with Zywu putting up insane numbers. And then this final, they squeak over the line. Looks like Liquid have run out of a bit of steam by the time Vertigo comes around. But again, Zywu putting up superlative numbers. The reason Vitality aren't getting an S from me, right? And I think it's very impressive that they put this run together with, you know, Spinks coming into the lineup. It's not as dramatic a change as maybe some of the other teams and their group stage is very good as well. It's not as dramatic a change as it could be because you're just trading a, frankly, pretty underperforming and pretty underwhelming rifler in Masuta for a, just a much better version in Sphinx. Like, obviously, they're not the same type of player. Um, I think Sphinx is like a late round playmaker and Masuta was just kind of like, do what you're told, do the kind of shit jobs. Um and Sphinx has a couple of roles on Vitality that are a little bit more impactful. But even just trading Sphinx one for one with Masuta in terms of roles, it was just going to be an improvement because Sphinx is just better. He's just better at killing people, like being brutally honest. Um, and I think Sphinx in general has got slightly better decision making, even though I think Sphinx's decision making is one of his um, weaker suits at times. Uh, so the reason they're not getting an S or an S minus or an S plus is because Zywu deserves the S. I think Vitality still may end up relying on Zywu doing this. 1.42 over 21 maps. Dude, this guy is doing insane things. This is not sustainable over a long period of time. I, I promise you. Nobody can do 1.42 over an extended period of time. If we go to stats, right, and we just look, this 1.27 and 1.25 and 1.22, these are like, you know, up there, the tippity toppest of, of ratings over all time. If we look over just 2022, 1.3, getting up to, to push kind of 1.3 is probably realistically the best you can expect from a super superstar player over a long period of time. Ziwu getting up to 1.4 is just absolutely checking out Minecraft mods. It's just magical. It, it it's superlative. It's insane numbers and not something I think that's replicable over a period of time. And I worry that Vitality is it's still going to come down to which it has with every iteration of this Vitality lineup, is Zywu hard carrying? Yes, they win. No, they lose. Yes, there seems to be a better supporting cast. Spinks has obviously been all right. You know, he's done, I mean, his overall series wasn't good here, but he had a couple of decent series here and there. Um, again, not great there, but he had some decent series and maps over the tournament. 
Magisk seemed a little bit unleashed. Maybe the change in roles uh, has allowed him to step up a bit because he was actually Vitality's second best player across the playoffs. Maybe he's been unlocked a little bit by the changes, but I still worry that Vitality are going to be the Zaiwu show and continue to be, and it's still going to all hinge on can Zaiwu play 1.30 rated in a tournament or better? Probably most of the time having to be better than that he just he's not gonna be able to do it every tournament he's not gonna be able to maintain especially not this level which like if you just, just look at these numbers man these numbers are, are stupid stupid numbers that is just not going to be maintainable over an extended period of time six months for example so that's the reason vitality don't get the s from me ziwu gets a personal s plus uh vitality as a team get an a plus because again i think the run was amazing. It was all great. All the context means that they get lots of credit, but Zaiwu still carried. That scores on the doors, boys and girls. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my grades. I will do a scores on the doors for the RMRs. Not sure how I'm going to split it up. If I'll do a video for each tournament, like America's and both of the European ones, I won't bother doing the Asian RMR. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that. Let me know if you have any opinions, by the way. Do you want a separate video for each RMR? Would you like me to combine them somehow? And, you know, maybe I just skip through and just give you grades for the lower ranked teams and talk about the top ones. Let me know what you think. Uh, did I say like and subscribe? I probably did. If you didn't like it, you're a pleb. Get out of here. And love you all. See you next time. Boys and girls.